um, wow, wow. Talk about a moment where you want a ballroom of 1,500 people <laughs> to be with you. Um, you guys, that was a beautiful, beautiful tribute. And um, thank you so much. I am overwhelmed, truly, truly overwhelmed um, for all of my friends, my colleagues, my dad, I love you. I would have never been able to do any of this without you. So thank you. Oh, I really do wish I could see you all in person right now, uh, but it is clear uh, I am feeling your support and friendship. You have stood by Emily's List and me through good times and bad. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for joining me on my truly life-altering journey and for the faith and trust you've placed in me over the 11 years I served as president of Emily's List. You know, I, I remember sitting in my very first board meeting all those years ago, feeling very nervous and uncertain, but determined to prove to our founder and board that I was ready to fill Ellen Malcolm's shoes. Well, I quickly learned those are shoes that cannot be filled. <laughs> so I got my own pair and started out on a journey that though I didn't know it at the time would profoundly change me. But my travels started long before that. I grew up in the labor union town of Butte, Montana. So I knew early on that I was a Democrat. My first political job, though, was as the finance director for Mary Reader, a candidate in Minnesota's first congressional district. Honestly, I had no idea what I was doing until a woman named Mary Jane Volk uh -huh. from Emily's List came to Southern Minnesota to teach me how to fundraise, just as she had for dozens of others. That race was where I first saw the power of Emily's List in action. Right after Emily's List endorsed Mary Reader, the checks and letters came pouring in from all over the country. Ellen, you made us work hard for it and you made us a better campaign because of it. But I was new to politics and very new to political campaigns, and I still just didn't get it. How the ground was what was not level for women or how far still we had to go as a country to achieve equal representation for women. It took a campaign or two more for me to start to clearly understand. Countless political jobs later, I was hired as president of Emily's List. And I made a personal commitment then to make this organization bigger, stronger, and more powerful than ever. I will say some Democratic colleagues warned me that I would limit my career by focusing only on women. Mm. But they didn't get it. I believe then, and I know for certain today, that the success of the Democratic Party was being driven by women. Women voters were deciding elections with black women in particular leading the way. What I didn't know in 2010 was the role Emily's List would play just a few years later when our democracy would be at the brink. When I joined Emily's List, the Republican Party was rapidly descending into the extreme fringes of the far right, starting with the Tea Party, fueled by the deep racism, sexism, and xenophobia that was given oxygen on social media every day. Politics has always had a very dark side where dangerous individuals spew hateful rhetoric and sometimes engage in horrible acts. A year into my tenure came a terrible, tragic day I will never forget, the attempted assassination of Gabby Giffords. 
Six people were murdered that day. And 13, including Gabby, were wounded. I realized that while there were so many things Emily's List can do, there is one thing we cannot. And that is protect our candidates from all the bad things that might happen. All of the threats they face from the growing movement on the other side that's based in fear and hate. Over the past 11 years, Emily's List women, our Asian American, black, brown, indigenous and Latina candidates especially have received countless death threats. Some have woken up in the morning to have militias camped out on their lawns. Others have survived kidnapping and assassination attempts. Many lived through the terror and trauma of being in the U.S. Capitol on January 6, 2021, while it was under mob attack. All, all have experienced harassment online at home and wherever they go. And it's not just the candidates. Too many of their young interns, staff and supporters have also been threatened and attacked. But make no mistake, this hatred that's being directed at women and women of color especially is not something new. While this extremism is finding new and creative ways to burst out into the open. It is part of a long tradition, one that's persisted throughout our history and is now being carried on by the GOP. And yet, in spite of everything, more and more women keep running and winning standing up and pushing back against the threats, hate, and terror. And time and time again, in some of our darkest moments, Emily's List women have been the ones to shine the light that help the rest of us find our way forward. Just like on the morning after the election in 2016 of Donald Trump, when women from across the country started calling our office to sign up to run. We're now at over 60,000 women and counting. The Trump may have been elected, but we weren't defeated. In 2018, I personally promised Nancy Pelosi that Emily's List would elect enough Democratic pro-choice women to take back the House, and we did. Then in 2020, Kamala Harris was elected our first Madam Vice President after being supported by Emily's List throughout her career as she advanced from local to state to national office. And meanwhile, Stacey Abrams, our hero, our first Gabrielle Giffords Rising Star Award recipient, led the fight against voter suppression in Georgia, paving the way for Democrats to take back the Senate. Today, I'm proud to say that over the past 11 years, Emily's List endorsed more than 1,800 women, elected nearly 1,000, and trained more than 14,000. We tripled the size of our staff and massively expanded our work in the states. We added millions of members to our online community, raised and yes, spent over $460 million to elect women. And we are here today, having come so far already, but we are only just getting started. So while I know leaving now is the right thing for me, I also know I will always love this organization and its, and its mission with every ounce of my being. So to the incredible Emily's List staff, past and present, the best team in politics. Working with all of you has been a joy and a privilege and my constant source of inspiration over the past 11 years. Your talent, 
your humor, <laughs> your hard work and determination to keep going, electing women to office and literally changing the face of power in this country in spite of everything that's happened was and is awe-inspiring. And I am deeply proud of each and every one of you. To Ellen Malcolm, our founder, our champion, and my friend. There is just, there is just no way to understate what you have done for this country. This big idea that you and your friends had 36 years ago to create an organization to level the playing field for women in politics. You changed the course of history. You are the ultimate groundbreaker. And all of you, all of you with us today, you are the reason why I know that no matter where I go or what I do, I will always be Emily. We will always be Emily. So thank you for this great honor. But most of all, thank you for your friendship and commitment to changing the lives of women and girls. I will always, I will always be with you in this fight. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Oh, Stephanie, I am, I'm hearing thunderous <laughs> applause from the ballroom full of people we can't see. I hope you are feeling the love. I am feeling all kinds of emotions right now, <laughs> my friend. I want to give you a big hug and a big hug on behalf of the 5 million Emily's List members, on behalf of the staff, on behalf of every candidate whose lives we have impacted and you in particular have inspired. We already miss you. And we're so proud to be honoring you tonight. And we're really glad we were able to surprise you with that very special video, especially with your dad at the end. It was, it was truly extraordinary. And all of those absolutely wonderful women, it's, you know, we tell our candidates, win or lose, whatever you end up doing and our staff, right, Emily, you never leave the Emily family. <laughs> and that is true. <laughs> it's true. It's true. And you will always be a part of that family. Thank you so much, Stephanie, and congratulations. Thank you.